Let's start with higher processes where fire side of capture one and we we'll move to how I did this screen with touching and color grading inside of Photoshop. So this is our capture one and this is the real fire. The first thing I did was crop this image 4x5. So I just come to my crop tool right here and just click on 4x5. I like using 4x5 because it works well for Instagram. So I'm going to crop this image like this and just click on OK. So next thing I did, I just come down to my high dynamic range and just take down the highlights just like this. All right. And also, I come down to my levels and just move the highlight part inside like so and move the shadow part inside a little bit like this. Now, next thing I'm going to do, if I just zoom in a little bit, you can see the skin tone are not looking even or uniform rather. And also, I'm seeing some tints of greens on the image, which I don't really like. So I'm just going to fix that. So to fix the skin tone and make it look uniform, I'm going to add a new field layer. So under this layer right here, click on this drop the icon and just click on new field layer right here. And just hide the mask by pressing M and come to my color tab right here. With this color tab selected, under color editor, you are going to see skin tone. So we have the basic, we have the advanced and we have the skin tone. So what we want to do is to click on the skin tone right here. Just click on this picker tool right here once you click on this picker tool just select any reference you want the whole skin to look like so for this one i want the whole skin to look like this place right here i'm going to click on it so that's my reference so what i'm going to do from here under this uniformity i'm just going to move the hue inside like this you can see the whole skin is starting to look like this place right here and also move the saturation so like i said i really don't like the tint of green which i'm saying so i'll come to this amount and just play with the hue and saturation of the amount right here so if I take it all the way down to minus 4, you can see those green things are no longer there. If I take it up, you can see the greens are now mostly visible on the screen too, which I don't really like. So I'm going to take the issue of the amount down a little bit. So let's see. That this works for me. Alright, so let me quickly show you the before and after. So you can see, this is the before and this is the after. So this is the before and after of only the skin tone, the before and the after so like this works for me now next i'm going to do i'm not going to open this image in photoshop and edit it inside of photoshop so i'm going to guys click on the image from here and just click on edit with and click on adobe photoshop and from here i'm going to use 16 bit and you can choose to use 8 bit if you want but i'm going to use 16 bit uh, my format is on tiff you can use a uh, psd file if you want but i prefer using this tiff file and my CC profile is set to Adobe RGB 1998 and just click on edit that right here. And once I click on that, this image is going to export to Photoshop. And from there, we can start doing our skin retouching. All right, now when this image opens inside Photoshop, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate my background layer. And I'm just going to remove the blemishes from this image. So instead of removing these blemishes manually, I'm just going to use the retouch on me to actually remove the blemishes. So I come to my filter, come to retouch on me and click on heal right here. What this does is that it will automatically remove the blemishes for me. And I highly recommend you get the retouch on me if you're actually making money off photography and retouching because I actually use it to retouch almost all my image. I do it first before actually doing focus and separation. So it's going to give you a better result and it's going to save you a lot of time. Once that load, I'm just going to zoom in so you can see it has automatically removed the blemishes for us. So this is the before and the after the before and the after the one remaining we can do it manually so from here i'm going to click on apply which makes mask selected i'm going to click on apply all right now next thing i'm going to do i'm going to use retouch on me micro dodge and bond to make the image look smooth to do my micro dodge and bond instead of doing it manually because doing micro dodge and bond manually takes hours so i'm going to use the retouch on me to actually do it can we press your control shift alternate e to create a stand visible layer come to filter again click on retouch on me and click on the jambo and like i said earlier if you're actually making money off photography and retouching i highly recommend you get it and if you use the link shop you're going to get 20 percent off any purchase you make and if you don't know what to purchase first i'll recommend you get the heel and micro the jambo those two are very very important i use them all the time all right so right now i'm just going to load and do my micro the jambo for us automatically so instead of spending hours doing it you can see this image is looking good already you can never go wrong with this so this is the before and the after. The before and the after. Just take a look at the skin. You can see how smooth and how good it's looking already. The before and the after. The before and the after. For me, you can choose to increase the intensity by taking the blend up just to make it more intense. So I'm going to take it up a little bit. Let's see. I think like this works for me. The before and the after. For me, I don't really have to do much for this image again because the image is looking good already. So I'm going to click on soft light layer and just click on apply. Alright, so next I'm going to do, I'll come to my blend mode, change it from normal 
to soft light to bring back the image so if i just zoom right now you can see how good the image is looking without actually doing square separation just with with touch on me so next i'm going to do i'm just going to manually remove those blemishes right there on the nose which are still visible and also try and fix the front of the hair just to make everything black so to do that i'll cut my action and by the way if you have my action i'm giving that for free just check the link in the show below for this action all right so i'm going to click on focus separation 16 bits because this image is 16 bit remember i capture one we use 16 bit now for this image since i don't want to use the mixer brush tool i just want to fix those front right there i'm going to use a low blur radius so i'm going to use a blur radius of two and click on ok now normally i'm not going to use focus separation blur radius of two the reason why i use two is because i just want to fix this front right here and make it blank so small blur radius is going to work better all right now first of all let me just remove those blemishes at the edge so we'll come to this high frequency copy right here which is this first one pick your close thumb tool right here once i pick my close thumb tool i'm just going to increase and decrease my ball size i just sample from a close by area and just paint over those blemishes right there as the edge all right now for me what i'm going to do come to this brush layer hide this side texture right here pick a mixer brush to make sure clean brush after each stroke is selected where is on 30, load is on 20, mix is on 90, flow is on 30 or you can use any mixer brush settings that works for you and make sure sample layer is selected because you are brushing on an empty layer now if you are working directly on this low frequency layer right here you don't need to sample all layer the reason why sample layer is selected is because you are brushing on this empty layer so I'm just going to decrease my brush size and just paint on this front right here just to blend it and make it look um if just to make it blend like that so that's why i basically use a small blur radius so let's see the before and after the before and the after the before and the after you can see it's looking so much better right now and what you can do you can just come to your high frequency layer again which is this first one and just sample from a close by area and just take your time to actually blend it even more by removing those blemishes around the edges like so Alright, like this works for me. I think I'm just going to blend this nose right here even more. But I don't going to use the focus separation blur radius of 2. So I'll come to my focus separation again. And just use the focus separation blur radius of 7. And hit OK. I just want to blend that nose. I don't like the way the nose is. So I'm going to blend the color right there. So I'm going to zoom in. With my brush layer selected. Pick my mixer brush tool. Hide this high texture layer right here. And just blend this nose right here to just make everything look really really good and smooth okay and also just blend these parts maybe blend these parts like this let's see so let's see what we've done let's see the before and after so this is the before and the after the before and the after for me i feel the nose is looking so much better right now all right now next i'm going to do i'm just going to make this image pop so i'm going to create a stamp assembly by pressing on ctrl shift alternate e come to filter Come to camera filter right here so once the camera filter open i'll just scroll all the way down to calibration right here and just move the blue primary saturation up a little bit to about 28 28 works on me next time i'm going to do i'll come back to my mask right here i'll click on select background i just want to make the background a little bit darker and just make the subject a little bit brighter that's what i'm going to do with this masking right here instead of camera error. all right now you can see the background is selected what i'm going to do now i'm just going to come to my exposure and just take the exposure down a little bit like this now i'm going to come to my create new mask again and click on select subject i'm just going to select the subject now what i'm going to do i'm going to come to my exposure and just increase the exposure of the subject a little bit like so all right so the before and the after now the last time i'm going to do this side of camera i'll come back to this adjustment again i'm just going to blur the background even more so i'm going to scroll the way down and come to less blur right here and just click on apply right here once i click on apply it will detect this subject and automatically apply that lens blur to my image and the result is really really amazing all right so you can see it has added it so this is the before and this is the after so for me i'm just going to boost the blur even more to make it even more blurry so i'm going to boost it like this so like this works for me the before and the after the before and the after so for me i'm going to click on ok now let's say the before and after of all did inside of camera so this is the before and the after the before and the after to color this image i have a reference image which i'm going to use to color this image 
I always have a reference image when retouching. So I advise you to always get a reference when retouching. So this is our reference image right here. And this image was shot by Top Life Photography. So I'm going to be using this image to color grade this image. And with the retouch on me, I can do that easily. All I have to do is come to my filter right here. Come to retouch on me and click on color match. And just bring that reference image. And retouch on me will automatically copy the color of my reference image and apply it to my image. So that I said, if you're actually making money off photography and retouching, I highly recommend you purchase this retouch on me because it's really, really helpful. So once that color match tab open, all I have to do is click on load reference right here. And just add your reference image, which is this one right here. And just click on open. So for me, what I'm going to do, I'll bring down this luminous to about one and take the color from 100% to about 50% or 53. And take the smoothing to about, uh, let's use 53 as well. Okay, so this is the before and the after. The before and the after. And from here, you can just play with the blending. This is the before and this is the after. So if I zoom in, you can see the color right here that I'm getting is the same color of this my reference image right here. So the before and the after. So I'm going to click on apply. So what I can do from here, I can just use my own adjustment layer to add a little bit of color grading. So come to my adjustment layer right here. Click on levels adjustment layer. And maybe add a little bit of contrast like this. Okay. Maybe a little bit of contrast. All right. So basically that's all I'll do. So this is the before and this is the after. And from here, I'm going to save this image and send it to my phone and see how the color looks. Now, if I don't like the color, I'll bring it back and just make more adjustment. Send it back to my phone. Make adjustment. Send it back to my phone until I actually get the color I want. So this is how I retouch this brighter portrait. And if you want to watch more retouch tutorial, check out this playlist right here. See you guys in my next one. Stay creative.